Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at a way to back up your phone's photos and videos using a Docker container called Image. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. I have always loved learning, and in fact, it's one of the reasons I started making videos about self-hosting here on YouTube. Being able to explain an idea to an audience in such a way that I could demonstrate a concept and then show that concept in practice is something that I really enjoy. So when the folks at Brilliant offered to sponsor some content on my channel, I was stoked. So we all know the best way to learn something is to do it yourself, hands on. And Brilliant has dozens of courses in their course list that enlist hands-on lessons in science, math, and computer science. So I've always wanted to learn how to code in Python. And luckily for me, Brilliant has a 17 part course on exactly that, including prerequisite courses that will help me understand Python even better. So now you can join the millions of people already using Brilliant by visiting the link in the description down below. And the first 200 people to click that link will get 20% off an annual subscription. So just to get this out of the way, so we're, we're on the same page from the start, this video is intended more to be an awareness video, not necessarily here's something you should deploy on your servers and use in production. And the reason for that is if we come over to the image GitHub page, it says not ready for production. Do not use to store your assets. This project is heavily under development. There will be continuous functions, features, and API changes. So again, this isn't something that I'm encouraging you to go deploy, but more than anything, I wanted to make this uh, kind of, like I said, an awareness video so that you're aware that it's out there, something to keep tabs on for future uh, for future use or if you wanted to get involved and help with development and tickets and things like that uh, that's kind of what this is meant to do but I do want to show you its functionality and how to get it installed using docker so I think that the best thing to do here first is show you the web interface for image uh, if we jump over here back over to my desktop here we can see here's image right up here I've got this on a domain name that you won't be able to access but uh, here it is and here we can see that I've actually used it as recently as this morning with regards to uh, backing up my phone uh, I'm actually working on another video that's going somewhere else but uh, here is some footage that I recorded this morning with my phone uh, here's a picture of my uh, my my dinosaur Bershear. Uh, his name is Spyro, if you care, but he's kind of doing a frog thing here. That's not really what he looks like, but uh, if we come back, um, that's just a photo that I took yesterday. Uh, again, we've got more photos here. Uh, here is something, if you watched my um, my my video about the Latte Panda 3, uh, this may look familiar as well, uh, but here we can see everything is nicely organized uh, and everything looks good. It's well laid out. Uh, here's a, well, here, here's a snake my cat caught the other day, a uh, friendly little garden snake no issues there, put him back out in the wild. And, and he was definitely happy to be there. But uh, you can see how responsive this application is, even in its current form. Uh, here we can see other stuff that I've backed up. You know, everything here looks great. It works fast. I need to dust my alien. But you kind of get the idea that this is, it's just, it's kind of idiot proof as it currently stands. You attach your, you get this installed, you get the phone on your, your app on your phone, you you connect them via the, the little connection screen, and your phone just backs up. I, again, this is a work in development. In fact, if we come back over to uh, to their GitHub page, we can see that, you know, 14 hours ago, 19 days ago, yesterday, two days ago, like this is actively in development. So um, that's kind of why I wanted to bring this up is because it is in development. And I think this has got a lot of potential. Um, there are some things in, in the app here that we can see, like up at the top, search, coming soon. Uh, you can type whatever you want in there, nothing happens. It's just a placeholder again, like it says, coming soon. If you wanted to, you can click here and upload photos. Let's just go ahead and upload a poster from a previous video. Uh, uploading down there in the bottom right-hand corner, and there it is. It even recognized the date at which the, the photo was created, which was August 15th, which was two days ago uh, for a recent video that was released on my channel. Um, so, so I really dig the uh, the image application. It is kind of a, a, a bit of a beast to install presently, but I've actually kind of talked to the developer behind the scenes uh, with an issue that I was having, that other people were having, that I think they've got fixed now. And so I think it's a good time to just kind of show you how, uh, how to deploy image on your server. Before we get into that, though, uh, we're going to jump over to Portainer here just so you can kind of see uh, what's going on with image. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven containers needed to make image work at the time of recording this 
video. Uh, each one of these will go, um, will be deployed via a single uh, Docker Compose uh, .yml file or stack, however you want to call that. Normally, uh, we would actually deploy this in Portainer, but because there's a .env file, uh, we're going to do this in, uh, in, in the terminal in command line. But I wanted to show you this just so you've got an idea of, of kind of what's going on uh, with the different containers that will be used here. Uh, if we come over here to images and let's actually pull, uh, let's just kind of re redo this to image. So here we've got some fairly large images here. Uh, the machine learning uh, image here uh, for the Docker container is about three gigs. Uh, the rest of them are considerably smaller, but 141 megs, 900 megs, and 300 megs uh, for, for some of these different images for the actual Docker containers. Just kind of wanted to bring that up because there is a fair amount of data that you will need to download for these images. I just wanted that to be clear up front. So. So basically what I wanna do here is actually come back to my containers. I'm gonna go ahead, <clears throat> uh, let's see, this is, uh, you know what, screw it. We're just gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna remove all of these images or all of these Docker containers here. 12 seconds later. Okay, so all of our image containers are gone off of our server here. If we come over to stacks, we can actually uh, see the image isn't even here anymore because it's not currently, uh, it's not currently deployed. So what I wanna do is actually come over here to their GitHub repository. Again, everything will be linked in the description down below. Uh, what I wanna do is come over here to Docker, like so. And here we can see that there are a few different uh, files in here. We've got a .env.example, that's the .env file that we're gonna use for our setup here. Uh, we've also got a few different options for our Docker Compose. We've got Docker Compose.yml. Um, uh, a dot test, a dot staging, and a dot dev. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just use, I think, uh, let's see, which one was updated most recently? Uh, you know what, we're gonna do this one uh, like so. So we're gonna use a, a couple of different things here for this. So first things first, let's get logged into our server via command line. So what we'll do uh, is we'll just do CMD. We're gonna go ahead and make this bigger. <clears throat> And then if we do a, an ls-a, uh, we wanna get all of the files, including the dot files. So we're gonna do a cd image. I was looking at a different server earlier. I was confused as to why this looked different, and now I know. So we're gonna cd Im into image. We'll do an ls-a again. And here we can see that we've got a docker compose.yml. Uh, we've also got a, a dot env file. Uh, what I wanna do here is actually, uh, I'm gonna do rm um, uh, docker compose.yml. Uh, I also wanna do dot uh, save, and then I also wanna do dot uh, I'm going to do rm.env uh, just so that, uh, oops, all of those are gone. We've just got a cloudflare.deb file in there. That's how I do all of my reverse proxy stuff using Cloudflare tunnels. I don't know why it's in this folder, but it is. I'm not too worried about it. So what I want to do is actually, um, I'm going to clear my screen like so. I'm going to do uh, nano.env, and we're going to come back over here uh, to our env.test, uh, sorry, env example file here. And uh, basically, let's just take a look at this here. We've got a database host name, which is MS image underscore Postgres. We've got a Postgres username, password. All of that you can change uh, in here if you want to. Obviously, for security reasons, I highly advise that you change as much of this as possible. Uh, just make sure that if, I, I wouldn't change image Postgres unless you change it in the Docker Compose that we'll take a look at here in a moment. But uh, basically, you can uh, modify all of this as you need to. Uh, the upload location uh, will absolutely want to change for this setup here. Um, but basically, you can uh, update this stuff as necessary. Uh, but let's go ahead and just copy this. We'll go back over here to our command line, paste that in there. We're gonna we're gonna go back up to the top. Um, of course, change your uh, JWT underscore secret to, uh, like it says, a random string that is so long and powerful that no one can guess. Uh, change that appropriately, of course. Uh, your upload location. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and change this uh, just to something like home Docker image two, uh, and then uploads, uh, just so that there's nothing gonna, gonna be kind of wonky in my setup here. Um, and then of course, like I said, you should change your Postgres, 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 and image there. Change all of that as necessary for the sake of this tutorial, because this is just going to be a demo server. I'm not gonna change any of this, but you should. So I'm gonna press Control O and Enter and Control X. And then we've got our .env file saved and ready to go. Okay, so for this, what we're gonna use that is actually this docker compose.yml file right here. Uh, in here, we've got uh, all of the stuff that's going to deploy all of the different uh, Docker 
images and, and containers that we saw earlier in this video when we were looking at Portainer. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually kind of zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, here we've got a, a version 3.8 Docker Compose. We've got several services under here, including uh, the image server. And here we've got all of the stuff that relates to that, including our upload location, which we set in the .env file, uh, which we've got uh, mapped right there. Our node uh, underscore env environmental variable is in production. It depends on the Redis and the database. Restart as always, those are all fine. Basically this one shouldn't try to start up until those other two, uh, the Redis and the database containers are up and running. Uh, we've got the micro services. Again, this is a, a large container, uh, but this kind of gives us um, uh, all of the information we need for that. Again, all of this is very similar to the image server that's above that. Uh, we've got um, uh, machine learning, also a large file here, a large image. Again, very similar stuff in here. Uh, this one also uh, depends, or the volume is the upload location. Our ENV file, our, no, our environmental variable is for production. Depends on the database, restart always. The web, again, restart always with that env file. Redis for faster uh, for faster response time, stuff that'll get stored in RAM for your, uh, for your performance there. We've got a database here. Again, uh, all of this is in here just fine. Uh, and then we've got our image proxy. That's kind of how we're going to access uh, the actual front end of this. Uh, so what we can do is actually scroll back up, copy this, go back over to our command line, do a nano, uh, Oops, whoa, uh, docker compose.yml, like so, and hit enter. We're just gonna paste that in there. We're gonna give this a second. Hey guys, editing David here. Uh, while I was going through this part of the, the video, uh, getting things set up, I ran into some issues uh, due to some inconsistencies in the Docker Compose uh, stuff that's over on the GitHub repository that of course will be linked in the description down below. Uh, there's some release stuff and some dev stuff and some just some different things that aren't quite uh, uh, synchronized yet, but I do have a copy of the .env file and the Docker Compose file that I used for my setup in this video to get things up and running. I will of course have that linked in the description down below. But again, remember, I don't encourage you to actually deploy this into production. Uh, this is just something to tinker with and play with uh, while it's being developed. Uh, so let's jump back to the part of the video where things are deployed uh, with the uh, .env and Docker Compose that I have available, again, linked in the description down below. If you'd like to get early access to my content, you can head over to Patreon, become a channel member here on YouTube, or head over to dbtech.fans. And any of those ways will help support the channel and give you early access to ad-free content. Uh, so then we can come back up and make sure that everything is the way we want it. Uh, all of this looks fine. So we'll do control O and enter and control X. We'll do docker uh, compose up, up dash D like so, and we'll hit enter. And then it's gonna go through and download everything it needs. It's going to redeploy everything as it needs to redeploy it. And then here in just a moment, we'll be up and running. Now, of course, I've already got these images downloaded and ready to go. So this is gonna happen very, very fast for me. However, you're gonna to have to download all of, the, all of these images first. So this will take a moment, but once it's up and running, we'll see all of these are done and then we'll get back to our just our blinking terminal line there next. Okay, so everything is up and going, it looks like. We've got um, all of these marked as done. So let's come back over to here. Let's take a look at our database real quick. Uh, server has started, that's good. So let's come over here and take a look at our server here. Make sure that everything looks good. There we go. It did take it a couple of seconds for the database to come up and get connected to. Uh, it looks like it is connecting, so that's good. We're glad to see all of this in green instead of like we were seeing up here with the red. So this is looking good. Uh, image server is in production environment. That's good. Let's uh, let's grab this and let's go to a new new thing here. Okay, welcome to ImageWeb, get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do is actually create an admin account at this time, because this is the first user on the system, that's what it wants us to do. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just, well, it's auto-filled, but I need it to auto-fill, so I'm gonna say DB and attack. I could type like so, and then sign up. Then we're gonna get logged in. And there's nothing in here, obviously, because uh, it's a brand new install, but uh, if I get on my phone here, so what I'll do is I'll come over here and I will open up the image app here on my phone. And right here it's saying it's having a hard time connecting. So what I wanna do is actually go back. I want to log out and then make sure that this is right and it looks like it is. I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in. And then I'm gonna come up here. I'm going to select uh, the, the assets that I want to do here. Hey guys, this part of the video is strictly for my Canadian viewers. So if you're not Canadian, uh, skip this video and I'll wait until you're done. Okay, 
Hopefully everybody who's not Canadian is now uh, somewhere else in the video. If you are Canadian and you're looking to get into self-hosting, but you don't want to break the bank with new hardware, you should definitely check out the folks over at Refurb Feed. They have a huge selection of always changing inventory of products that have been used and refurbished and are ready to go for your next home lab project. And if you use code DBTECH when you check out, you can get 10% off your next laptop purchase. Be sure to check the description of any of the products you consider purchasing as some of them may not have a hard drive or they may not have a power supply, but all of that will be listed in the product description of each of the products as applicable. So be sure to head over to refurbfeed.com for your next home lab purchase. So because the world seems to know that I want to get this video completed so I can get it out to you guys so you guys can take a look at image. Of course, it wanted to back up all of my video files first. Uh, so I stopped all of that and I told it to just back up some goofy stuff that I had downloaded from the internet instead. Uh, so let's jump over here to my desktop and take a look at what this looks like here. It does still have some of the videos and that kind of stuff that I was backing up before. Uh, but we'll give this a second to load up. Let's uh, let's do a full refresh there. Here we go, and here we can see, well, there's a there's a Linus Tech Tips thing that I downloaded. Um, we'll give this a second to load. I don't think I've got enough resources allocated for this particular container. This one does require a couple of gigs of RAM and some processing power and that sort of thing, because there are so many different containers running in the background for this. Uh, let's see if we can't get it to, uh, to load here. Of course, I, I did not have this issue when I was on the computer in the other part of the house. Uh, this one, of course, made me feel old. Uh, that is that is film uh, that cameras used to use uh, back in the black and white days. I'm kidding. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, no, like, so anyway, uh, here we can see it's all it's all backing up. Um, of course, if you've been watching uh, the boys, you'll get that reference. Um, but here we can see <clears throat> um, uh, it's kind of my 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 dirty mind there. But anyway, uh, here we can see that it's all backing up as you would expect it to. Uh, I did uh, change it from backing up my photos to backing up stuff I had downloaded from Twitter instead. And of course, you've got different options on the, the things you want to back up in the app. You can make all of those selections on how you want to do that. The other nice thing that I that I like about this is if somebody finds this uh, this website and they get logged in as you, uh, there's really nothing they can do here other than view things or upload things. All of your uh, deletion, like your, your media deletion, if you want to delete anything from this setup, you'll have to do it from the app, at least at the time of recording this video. So something to keep in mind there as well. Um, but that's, that's kind of what I wanted to show. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show um, kind of the full backup process because the world is against me today for some reason. But uh, this is just a demonstration of it backing up stuff that I downloaded from a social media platform. That was an option in there. So so that's image. Again, this isn't meant to be something that you would deploy in production. Uh, this is, like it says on their GitHub page, still a very or still very much a work in progress. And I just wanted to make people aware of it so that they can support it, contribute to it, help with it, whatever the case may be. Uh, Cause I know a lot of people are looking for uh, Google Drive alternatives or, or, or Apple Cloud uh, backup alternatives um, without using things like NextCloud and things like that. This is another, will be another good alternative in the future once it's actually live and ready for production. But I think with that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And I will talk to you in the next video.